again, thank you so very much for taking time out of your day uh, to join us here for the February Lunch and Learn session. Um, today's agenda is going to cover a lot of updates um, with regard to uh, Penny's special enrollment period. We're going to do a, uh, an overview of qualifying life events. We're going to discuss uh, the new qualifying life event for individuals that are at or below 150% of the federal poverty limit. We're going to discuss the path to Penny, uh, which is a partnership that we have with the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue uh, that uh, so far has, through form REV 1882, has uh, helped a lot of people uh, who are uninsured uh, request information about how to get insured. And of course, we're going to do our best to have questions and answers. Um, so we are in the special enrollment period, which um, to be quite honest with you, this is the first time uh, that uh, since our launch that we've had a, a genuine special enrollment period here at Penny. Um, that special enrollment period is from January 1st to December 31st of 2022. And outside of open enrollment, um, if you're a Pennsylvanian who has a qualifying life event, uh, and that could be something uh, akin to getting married, having a baby, losing uh, health coverage from, say, your employer, um, it, it opens up a 60 day special enrollment period for those individuals to connect with brokers, uh, to connect uh, with Penny and to review not only uh, their eligibility for financial assistance, but also to compare and shop plans. Um, with that being said, um, what I'd like to do is turn things over to my colleague, Julian, and Julian's going to review qualifying life events. Uh, as they apply to the special enrollment period and update us on uh, some of the paths uh, that individuals can pursue, uh, if, you know, from a customer service perspective in helping customers make sure that they uh, have what they need in uh, accessing uh, health insurance through Penny. Uh, Julian? Yeah, thanks, Scott. And, um, you know, glad to be able to take some time to talk to everyone today. Uh, for those of you that I don't know uh, or have not heard of me, uh, I am in the technology and operations team uh, with Penny, um, but I do have some experience working with uh, brokers and assisters, so I try to help out when I can. So um, as Scott mentioned today, we're going to take a look at um, some qualifying life events uh, and a couple different examples of those as well as um, one of the new SEPs uh, that we're gonna be offering for this upcoming year. So on this slide here, um, you can see these are most of our uh, SEPs that you know, we offer, um, that someone is, uh, th that we have grouped into a couple different categories here, such as loss of health coverage, uh, changes in household. Um, we thought that this would be a good time to remind everyone of kind of the different types, um, how those are triggered, and um, some of the different requirements for some of these SEPs uh, and QLEs. So um, on this slide here, you can see, um, I mean, some may be unaware or uh, those who have not utilized this before. Uh, we have a bunch of FAQs and reference guides, uh, as well as support pages on the Penny website. So you can feel free to navigate to penny.com and under the, the learn drop down or some of those. And also here we have uh, on the uh, under the support drop down some of those pages as well. Um, and included on the support pages are the new 2022 quick reference guide, uh, which is what we're taking a look at now. So this lists all of our possible SEPs uh, and QLDs, um, who they are available to, um, if it's for somebody who is currently enrolled or somebody who would be a new member, how that differs, uh, and some of the, the reporting requirements that may be needed. Um, so it's definitely a great tool to keep on hand. And like I mentioned, it was just updated for this new year uh, with a couple uh, new SEPs that are going to be 
So for the first example, um, we wanted to go through the difference between two different kinds of QLEs, one where documentation is not required, um, and then one where documentation is. So for this example, uh, we're going to take a, lot, a look at loss of minimum essential coverage. So uh, the first step, regardless of what the life event is, uh, is going to be submitting a new eligibility application. Um, so whether it's a life event or simply updating income, a demographic change, whatever it may be, uh, we're always going to start at the same place, which is editing this application under the next steps uh, section on the on the dashboard. So um, depending on where the member is in the process, you may see edit application uh, on that blue button there. Um, or you will always see uh, the edit application link under the or help household eligibility section uh, further down on the page there. Uh, what's nice about the edit application function is that it will pre-populate uh, a lot of the information um, that has already been submitted. So you're not totally starting from scratch uh, whenever you're needing to do one of these. Uh, and then in the next couple slides, you'll see that you're also able to jump ahead in uh, when you're submitting a, a new eligibility event. So you don't have to necessarily go through every single page uh, to submit one of these. So uh, on this page, we're like we mentioned, the first step was to submit the eligibility application. Um, after that has been submitted, you'll get the uh, immediate notification if um, you're eligible and if any tax credits or cost sharing reductions have been applied. Um, and then after the application has uh, been submitted, you can continue to, in this case, uh, confirm the event and then shop for plans. So the next step section on the dashboard will always kind of point you in the direction that you need to go next and what's on that blue button will kind of identify what is needed uh, in the next steps process so uh since we are outside of open enrollment right now you will have to complete that that special enrollment period and confirm that event um, there are a couple situations where you may be able to skip this step because the system is able to identify and determine if a, if a member has been eligible for an SCP uh, just based on what was in the eligibility application. But for this scenario, we need to confirm the event. Um, and we'll see here on this screen, you can go to the drop down, pick the app applicable qualifying life event to choose from and enter the date of the event. Um, for some events, you are able to report this in the future, um, but for some events, uh, they can only be reported on the date of the event um, or after. So for example, uh, you know, the birth of a child, you can't uh, submit an, uh, an eligibility application for a new child in the future. Uh, you know, the earliest that you'd be able to do that would be on the actual birth date um, or after the fact. So it depends on what the QLE that you're claiming is, but um, that kind of depends on our, th that would affect how you're, what date you're putting in the, um, the event date there. So after that's been entered, the system will ask you to confirm before moving forward. And then after that's confirmed, you can go back to the, the main page on the dashboard and you will see that you now have a countdown banner at the top um, and that this has been the the application has been immediately approved so you are now ready to shop for plans uh, a quick note on this particular countdown date um, since we submitted the event date in the future for this particular example um, you have the 60 day or up to 60 day shopping period um, and that is past the event date so uh, in this case the event date was reported i believe at the end of february so you have uh, the 13 or is that 15 days um i think it's 13 13 days um until that 60 day window so that's where we're getting the 73 from uh, alternatively, if this was submitted 59 days after the event date, uh, there would only be one day available to shop and enroll. 
So just a reminder that it's based on the event date, um, not when the event is reported. So the next step would be to click shop for plans. Um, and then at this point, I think everyone's probably pretty familiar. Uh, go in, pick your plans, and uh, depending on the member's current status, that will determine if a binder payment is needed or not. Uh, if they're just changing their current status, uh, a binder payment may not be needed, but obviously if they're electing new coverage, they may need to submit that. Um, and then once done with shopping, you will know the process is complete because the countdown banner and at the top has been removed and the shop for plans button has been uh, removed from the dashboard and it now shows edit application, which is what it showed at the very beginning. So um, any subsequent life events you just have to go through this whole the same process again. Um, so quick side note, I know I saw a couple questions pop up in the chat. Um, I can't really track them as I'm going, but I will take a look at those as soon as I'm done with my section and uh, respond to some of those. So feel free to, to submit those, but um, I'm not ignoring you. We'll, we'll, I'll get to those uh, as soon as I'm done with my section here. So um, the other example we wanted to show was a QLE where documentation is required. So for this example, we're going to use uh, the life event of a new Pennsylvania resident. So the first step is always the same. Uh, the eligibility application has to be completed. Once that been, has been submitted, you'll see if qualified, uh, if you get any APTC or cost sharing reductions. And then the next step is reporting the life event. So similar to the last example, we're going to confirm the event. Um, and now because this one, in this example, documentation is required, uh, we pick the new Pennsylvania resident from the drop down, entered the event date, uh, and in this case, we put uh, March 25th, which we're assuming is the date that this member is moving. And after clicking continue, the next steps section will show, uh, the button will show to upload documents, which is different from the previous example. So, um, this is not the same as after a member has already been enrolled and then we are asking for maybe proof of income or social security verification, something like that. Um, when a member is enrolled, we're given, they are given conditional eligibility and the conditions are you know, that they, they attest to or provide proof of those various pieces of information. Um, but we don't prevent a member from enrolling uh, due to that. This is required for the member's enrollment. So this is before the proof of L or income, proof of social security, uh, whatever it may be. So if these documents are not uploaded, then the member's not able to proceed with the application. Um, so you can see there's a box there to choose the file and upload that. Uh, in this case, for a um, a member that's moving to Pennsylvania, we used sort of a lease agreement. Um, and also on that page, if you're unsure of what is needed, there is a link to uh, the requirements for the different SEPs. And you can also reference back to the guide that we mentioned earlier. Uh, and so once those files are uploaded, you will immediately see the first screen or the, the, the part at the top here where it says pending review. So this means that we've received the documents and uh, they are in the process of being reviewed and approved. And then once approved or once reviewed, you'll see one of the next two screens. Um, the middle one there with rejected, you'll see that the upload documents button is now there and the next steps is essentially gone back and, and asking you to upload documents again. Uh, that means that the original documents were not approved uh, for whatever reason. Maybe they were ineligible uh, or accidentally uploaded the wrong document, um, but there will be notes that indicate why it was not approved. Um, hopefully it would be approved, in which case you would see the last two screens there, which uh, say that you've been confirmed and you are now eligible to shop for plans. You'll also see that the red exclamation point is changed to a green check mark on the qualifying event tab on the dashboard. 
uh, indicating that you're ready to move forward. So at this point, similar to the last example, uh, you go ahead and click shop for plans. Um, go ahead, pick your plans. And again, if a binder payment is needed, uh, you can go ahead and submit it at that point. And then once that's done, you will see that the next step section again, uh, the button has been updated to edit application, which is the first step in submitting an application or an eligibility update. So um, that indicates that uh, that process has been finalized and we've received that update. So the last thing that we wanted to mention was uh, one of the new SEPs that we're offering for 2022, which is the members who are at or below 150% of the federal federal poverty limit. So uh, who is eligible for this? Um, it's members who are currently eligible for APTC and who also have a household income at or below 150% of the FPL. Um, you can see there's a quick chart or a guide next to that with um, what 150% of FPL is for a different sized household. Um, because this is a brand new SEP, um, claiming it is going to vary uh, depending on the member's current status. So if the member is not currently enrolled, then the SEP can be self-serviced. Um, it can be claimed automatically. And like in the two examples we just showed, um, they'd be able to report that and it would be automatically approved assuming they meet the requirements. Um, for members who are current members and who are currently enrolled, uh, the automation process is not quite available yet. That will be coming. Um, but in order to claim it for current members, they will need to reach out to our contact center uh, in order to claim the SEP. So um, on this page, we can see that um, you would update the, uh, or this is uh, an example for a new member who does not have a current enrollment. Um, as always, again, edit application would be the first step. Um, and if any applications were submitted previously, again, it will still pull information from those applications. Um, and then here we can also kind of see uh, along the left hand side, the, the different pages uh, of the application. So we were mentioning kind of jumping ahead a little bit earlier. Um, so this member doesn't need to submit the first two or three pages of the application. Maybe they've already done that uh, previously. So they can go ahead and jump to the income sources part uh, where they can update that information. Um, since this is for um, a member that is less than 150% of the FPL, we're assuming that their income sources have changed. So they can pretty much jump to this point and make any necessary changes. After they make those changes and then submit the application, um, they'll just need to attest to that. And again, they will see the eligibility results. Um, since these members are at or below 150% federal poverty limit, they will most likely be eligible for APTC and cost sharing reductions. Um, and that's obviously due to their, their income. So on the next page, we'll see that uh, the life event has been reported at the top of the page and at the same time the SEP has been approved. So the system is now prompting you to shop for plans immediately. So previously uh, you would have had to confirm the life event and if documentation was required we would have, would have had to upload that. Uh, but the system has recognized that this person is eligible for this SEP it's been submitted and automatically approved. And so you can now move directly into the plan shopping tool. So again, that was just a, a quick look at the new 150% of the federal poverty limit SEP. Um, just a couple of notes, this is live. So um, current members and new members are able to, to claim this SEP um, for the existing members, again, they will need to reach out to the contact center in order to claim this. Um, and when calling the contact center, 
uh, they can ask for the low income SEP um, and uh, the contact center rep should, you know, they're aware that this is out there and, and know what that should mean. Um, but again, if anybody has any issues trying to claim this, certainly uh, reach out to us at the, the brokers at penny.com email and uh, and let us know and we can do you know, any necessary training as needed. But uh, again, the contact center is aware of this and, and should be uh, able to help with that. So um, I'm going to hand it back over to Scott to talk about the path to Penny. And uh, again, I'll take a look at some of those questions in the chat now and uh, respond to those. So. All thanks. right. Thank you so much, Julian. Uh, that was a lot of great information. Um, I have one last uh, segment here for the lunch and learn that I'd like to cover, <clears throat> and it's the path to Penny. Uh, this year, Penny has uh, partnered with the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue uh, to allow uninsured tax filers to indicate that they would like to receive more information about coverage uh, as they complete you know, their Pennsylvania tax return. In, in particular, um, the form that we use uh, is REV 1882. Um, for those customers who do indicate that they or their spouse uh, or dependents are uninsured on form REV 1882, basically they'll receive an official notice starting in April uh, from Penny with the following details. Uh, number one, is how to claim their newly created account uh, on Penny. Number two is an estimate of the financial savings they may be eligible for uh, through Penny. And number three, how to enroll through uh, their automatically generated tax filer special enrollment period. Um, if customers would like uh, coverage before the generation of these notices because a lot of folks do file their taxes early. Um, if if they would like to receive that, all that they would need to do is reach out to Penny Customer Service and uh, we'll be more than happy to help. Currently on uh, Penny's, Penny's homepage, if you go to the learning tab, the learn tab at the top and click on that, you'll see in the drop down, you'll see path to Penny. Um, and we have a resource site that's available for everyone um, that not only explains and shows what REV uh, 1882 looks like, but also uh, outlines the steps. And, and uh, you know, again, that's, that's a resource that's up and running right now. Um, REV 1882, this is an example of the form. And again, this is avail available on the website that I just showed you. Um, and it outlines very, very specifically what information uh, will be gathered and communicated from the Department of Revenue to Penny in order to help these individuals who are uninsured uh, receive information about how to get covered. So it's something we're very excited about. And this is a program that is for our current tax season as well as future tax seasons. So. Um, with that being said, I'd like to open things up for questions. Um, and uh, if if you have questions, please feel free to uh, either ask them or drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll we'll do our best. And also, just to remind everyone up at the very top of the chat when we first started, we had a lot of questions at our you know last month's broker work group meeting. Well, we've answered those questions and we've posted them on the broker resource page and there's a link to it at the very top of your chat. OK, so with that being said, um, are there any questions? All right, well, uh, as another reminder, um, if you do have questions or if you have feedback for us, uh, we always welcome that um, you can call if you need customer assistance or 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 if you need technical assistance you can reach out to 844-844-8040 and our broker uh, broker services group will be happy to work with you um, also you can send your questions to brokers at penny.com uh, as julian mentioned uh, if you have any questions about qles if you have questions about um, you know the path to penny 
or uh, special enrollment periods, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Um, and again, uh, this this broker lunch and learn was recorded. Um, it will be shared publicly and the link will follow. So uh, we encourage you, please do share it with your colleagues. And uh, again, if you have questions or you need help, we're, we're gonna be here for you. So um, with that being said, thank you so much uh, to Julian. Uh, your expertise uh, was uh, very welcome uh, at today's session. So uh, thank you again uh, to everyone for taking time out of your day and your schedule uh, to learn a little bit more about Penny Special Enrollment Period, our qualifying life events, and our path to Penny. Uh, with that being said, thank you so much. Have a peaceful day.